My people, this is not TMC TV and Radio. My name is Omo Aluke Ajakaye. And as you know, for TMC TV and Radio, not only we contain you, we contain Mama, we contain Papa, we contain everybody to make sure that our Bodo Ninja Day better. Now we carry give you a right now, make we summon you this news as they come out for Edo State, as Edo State Governor God, you know, Baseki, don't talk say government go recover every inch of land where land grabbers don't collect for inside Edo State. Obaseki took this one for the workshop on phase one of Edo State Regional Development Plan and Benin City Master Plan with Shelley on Tuesday for Government House for Benin City. This workshop went in Shelley with traditional rulers, government people, civil society people, and important stakeholders stay in line with the Edo State government commitment to plan Edo State and Benin City Wella when constitute body inside the Making Edo Great Again agenda of Governor Godwin Obaseki when people sabi as a mega agenda. Governor Godwin Obaseki when talk say Benin Empire, now one of the most planned city for the world, constant talk say before him come out as governor, him administration go create a bunker plan when go help plan Edo for the next 30 years. Obaseki constant talk say any community where want sell land must first do check check with government to make sure say their plan follow government plan make confusion for no day. In everything we do, one of the most important features of our lives is the land on which we operate. Everything we do has to be done on land. And we are lucky in Edo State in the sense that for over 700 years, we developed a land management system that everybody knows about and everybody respects. The Benin Empire is reputed to be one of the most organized in Africa, in terms of the way it has carried out its affairs. The people who visited us here, Portuguese explorers, who visited us here hundreds of years ago, talked about how orderly our city was, how planned everything they met and they saw was. So we have an advantage as a people. The question is that almost 700 years after, why do we have a crisis? What is going on? For a long period, because we had a monarchical system, a government headed by the Oba that enforced rules, everybody obeyed. When the British came, they met an organized system and the they superimposed what they brought from England on what we had. They did not destroy it. The land in Benin and Edo State at that time was owned and supervised by the sovereign. The king had the land and held the land in trust for his people. That is a tradition. That is our history. Come the military, we then had a crisis of legitimacy. And the military in its own wisdom came up with the Land Use Act to now vest all the land in the government under the supervision of the governor and the state. I'm saying all of this so that we know where we're coming from. Because somebody has to be responsible not only for administering the land, but also planning so that everything can fall in place. So that when you come into a place, a state, you can say this is for forests. This is this is one we preserve. This one we used to farm. This one is for building houses. Growing up in Benin City, there were quarters. There were communities. The communities had wards. So when you want land, you go to the ward. The ward will lay out. They have, the wards have all have layouts. And they are the ones that we allocate land to. Is it not? And then you now take it to the palace for it to be registered. With the land use acts, you are supposed to take all of that document and get it surveyed and registered with government. But over time, particularly since the mid-80s, everything broke down. All the plans that were put in place, nobody respected them anymore. The last real plan we had for those states was under our late governor, Ubamudia. So, are we surprised today that when rain falls, everybody is afraid because you are not sure that you will not be carried away by the flood. Why is that so? Because the natural path, water will have followed, 
people have purchased, sold the land, and they have built on it. Why is it that government roads does not last? Our soil is supposed to drain water away, but when we have clogged everywhere, our land is now as if we are in the heart of the Niger Delta. So for us as a government, we said, no, we will not allow this continue. If there's one thing this government is going to leave behind, it is a master plan for a door looking out for the next 30 years. So that the children have, have a direction. When I was a child, General Bomodia commissioned a master plan. They put it, they displayed it in Rupota Hall. And as school children, we used to go and look at that plan. That was when the ring road was built. It used to be public square, is it not? That was when all the roads, Akema Road was dualized. Akwakwaba was dualized. Was that not the case? Sir? That was what we meant. But since then, nothing has happened that has been that lasting. So we've said as an administration, we must leave one for the future. Because God will not forgive us. If with the support we got from Edo people, we leave, we finish, and we cannot say this is the direction we have given our people. God will not forgive us. But can we plan without control of the land? We cannot. So what has happened over the last few years, you cannot also blame the people. Like I said, government had a plan to say this is where you build a house, this is where you build school, this is where you build playground. You know, before you sell land, every area is laid out. Every community that is selling land will have to register the layout before government. And that layout has to conform with a master plan. So when you don't have a master plan and you don't have layout, what, you, what do you have? Confusion. The communities now say, oh, it is our land. Yes, it is your land. But that land, there's a law in this country, in our constitution, which vests the authority of that land on the governor of the state. You cannot do anything you like with it without the permission of a governor. That is what the law says, is in the constitution. And the government can take that land at any time to plan for the use of the generality of people in that area. Registration is now the proof of ownership of community land. Before you sell, you have to show us a layout. That layout must conform with our master plan. If it does not conform, we will not agree. Because this master layout, with this master plan, will tell us where school is supposed to be, where road drainage is supposed to be, where road is supposed to be, where playground is supposed to be. All of that must be there. So if you say you are selling your land, first you have to lay it out. We must make sure that all of these things are there. So that we don't have a situation today. You come into Benin, you go to some communities, they, have, they sell all the land, including the road. I went to a community one day to see somebody, and you, I couldn't get there because this person built fence here, this person built fence here, only one car can go at a time. And I said, if there's fire in the house there, how will a fire truck get there to put out the fire? Before you build a house in Benin, we know that you must be, there must be setback, is it not? So that we have to, one day when government wants to expand the road, they have room to expand. But today, everybody builds right to the center of the road. We will not allow it again because it will not be part of our master plan. We all like to travel. Most people have children, relatives, everybody abroad. When we go abroad, is that what we see? For us, the reason why we must do this is that we have no excuse why our place is the way it is today. If 500 years ago, our forefathers knew what to do, how to plan, how to have wide streets, what excuse do we have today? Well, is it that we don't have the tradition? So, this government has said, our master plan is going to be our Bible for development. 
nothing is going to happen. Nobody is going to build any house in Edo State going forward after we have run this master plan without first making sure that that land, you own it or it was sold to you by the owner. So if community is the owner, there must be evidence that community has registered the land. For you to build, for the community to sell, there must be evidence that the cut land has been laid out and approved to be part as part of the master plan we have. For you to build, then you must have a building approval. Not this one people are building anyhow and one day the houses are coming down on top of the people who live in there. You see what is happening in Lagos now? Today they say, oh, house has collapsed. We don't want it here. Every building must have a building plan. Governor Baseki talks about the reason for these things where government they do not to create better state with a bonger plan and constantly attract correct investment come do. All we're trying to do is to make our city and our state beautiful. We want to attract investments. We want to have an orderly state. Mistakes have been made in the past. We cannot continue with those mistakes going into the future. You voted for us because you believe in us. We now say we must correct all the mistakes of the past and lay a future that we'll be proud of for our children. I have said it. People are on social media. Every inch of land that has been taken by a land grabber from the owner, I will retrieve it and give it back to the original owner. <laughs> and the owners will now have to plan, make sure that everything they are now doing complies with the law. Every piece of land in Edo State must now be registered. That is why we brought the cost of registration low. So nobody can say, I didn't know. Just go online and search. If anybody comes to offer you land, you go online and search. Take, put the uh, coordinates. You will see who has it, whose name it was registered in. If you don't go and buy anything happen, you don't blame anybody. We are not a wicked government. We are doing all of this for the progress of our people. We cannot continue the way we are going. It is not in our interests. The new city is expanding. You have seen the city expanded 156 times in the last 80 years. When you are flying over Benin, I'm wondering, when will government ever get to these places? Because government most times do not even know that those communities exist. We don't know whether there's hospital there. We don't know how to put roads. But with the planning we are putting in place now, we will know. So that by the time we are leaving, we can tell you, over the next five years, this is what the next government should do. That road cannot get here until this time. Or we need to raise extra taxes to do this community. There must be a plan, because they say, those who fail to plan, plan to... Governor Gordon Obaseki constantly answer different questions on top of the new town development project and he constantly took out for different land matter for inside Edo State. What happened in Obagenosa? Let us be honest. About eight years ago, the idea was raised that we need to have a new town. And when we looked at the study, we said, okay, that is the best way to expand the city. About six years ago, the former administration did not do anything. When we came into office, we then said, truly, let us acquire areas in that axis so that we can build a new town. There's too much pressure on the center of the new city. We then did a compulsory acquisition. We issued notices and call people so that we can pay their compensation. They all was bush. Most of it was bush. There were just a few palm farm. We, do, we did what you call a flyover. And we can show you what that place was when we acquired it. From with the good things, that we have very good images. This was in 2017. So you can see yourself what that place was when we acquired it. 
Nothing happened for two or three years until we built that road from Airport Road through Iriri to Sapley Road. Once we started building, all the people just went in and started grabbing the land. That is what happened. We were putting signboard warning people, this is government land, though. don't buy. Nobody answered us. Yeah, we boy day. <laughs> Aha. January 2021. We had acquired in 2018. Do you see anything there? Do you see? Is it not green? Look at it one year after. What happened? In one year. <laughs> Who's on whose land? <coughs> when we are we were doing the master plan, this is what happened. We have the evidence. That's why none of them can go to court. For them, they said they didn't care. No, but nothing can happen. That was why I now said, because they were armed. True or false? That is why I went to Abuja to get a special squad. And you hear the guns from my special squad. I said, let them come. He said, now we have government or we don't have government. If you allow them, it is you today. Tomorrow, you don't know who it will be. That's why we have the first responsibility of government is law and order to protect lives and property. So, in the case of Abuja, we acquired this land. It is government land. Okay, some people have been defrauded. We are now doing an enumeration. We say, everybody who bought land, come and let us know. Show us the paper they gave to you. Right? So that we can also record and enumerate. Show us how much you paid. I will go after them. Many of them have run away, but I have their pictures, I have their photographs. I'm going to be declaring them wanted. I'm putting on billboards across the city. Anywhere anybody see them, we arrest them. They will produce the money they collected. We know many of them would have spent it anyhow. Well, but after that enumeration, we can now sit down with you to say, okay, you pay them how much for two or three plots? Okay, you may not be able to get all the two or three plots. Take one. Do you understand? We are your government. We will not let you suffer twice. Somebody stole from you, then we will not punish you on top. No. We will look for a way to resolve it. Are we clear? They are the ones going around spreading the false information about government just to give a bad name and justify what they are trying to do. But we will not let them. And I know from what I've heard from you today, you will not allow them to do it. How many years ago everybody was building bungalow? Today, does it make sense for everybody to be building bungalow? You go abroad, everybody is building high rise. Why? Because they want to use the land more effectively and efficiently. But the truth is that it is the economy, the economics that will force you. If the land becomes very expensive, you know it doesn't make sense to build one unit on the land. You want to build more units so that you can make your money back. Also, in terms of when we are, we are going to be defining zones, and, but you can't, I can't force you to say, okay, I bought this land 100 by 100. Let me, I want to build bungalow. I say, no, you must go and build high rise. There will be areas where you will designate anyway to say this area you can only build up to 10 floors or 5 floors or what have you. Mass housing is important. We must build mass housing. And we have started, this is what, the reason why we are even acquiring the land. It's not to sell to big men alone. It's to sell to everybody. Look at what we are doing in a motor garden. But mass housing, to, for mass housing to work, you have to plan it, you have to provide the infrastructure and then you have to support the citizens to have mortgages to be able to buy the houses. So change of use, there is a process for, to change use. If we say this area is for, com uh, for residential and you want to do commercial, then you must apply and if it doesn't fit what we want for that area, then that application cannot be approved. So, part of it has been our problem. I will be the first to admit that is the corruption in governments. 
that has led to some of these problems. And we're attacking that corruption in government. Architect Tegariba talked about existing structures and planning codes. Every part of this urban plan is to, for us to, they, must, they will have processes and produce, procedures. There must be codes. When you lay out an area, you have to say these are the number of, you know, the meters before you have a street. You, all of that should be planned. That is why you have planning, which we grew up with. Most of that has been reformed, but most of it has also been jettisoned, were thrown away. So going forward, this master plan, or the various master plans, will be registered, will be online. You can go and look at it and say, no, this was not part of the master plan that was designed. Everybody will see it. It's not a secret. It will not be a secret document. So that's why we will expose it to the professionals, to look at it, town planners, surveyors, architects, to look at it, and from a technical st uh, standpoint, to say, no, this is not what, this will not work, and we will amend it. But once we have amended it, it is now a Bible. Somebody said, how do we ensure sustainability? Once the master plan is finalized, we'll have sessions like this. You people will comment on it. After we have taken all your comments in, we then draft a law to back the master plan. So that, so that when, you do, when you do anything in violation of the master plan, you are violating the law and you can be prosecuted. Um, Mr. Otamere, thank you so much. You said education and communication is very, very key. The problem is, in the last few years, we have been working. Because before now, you know how government behave. They come in, government shall do this, government will do this. Government will just talk, 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 talk. Nothing to show for it. That is why we, as a government, we try and first do the work. That's why you don't see us jumping from place to place saying we're doing commissioning. Let us do the work first. Then, after we've done the work, we can show you. So when we are communicating, we are communicating with evidence. We are not just talking. So that is, you know, so it was our fault that we, didn't, we were not talking before. But we didn't want to start talking without something to show. Now we have something, you will see us will be having regular sessions like this informing the people on what we're doing. They said in the past, they took land, they laid out the area, and only big men, a few people, got the land. I promise you, this will not be the case. Once we are ready, we will advertise it on the internet everywhere. And every allocation will be there for you to see. There's no secret. Government should not be run as a secret cult. So everything we do will be online. Anybody can go and check it out and query it. And say, okay, this company that you gave this land to, we want to check. That is the directors of the company. They, you know, they, this is what they did before, they, or something. But everybody will have the right to go and see what we have done. Okay, uh, my brother Tom in Omagwe said, we should delay increasing the price of CFO. But even if I was going to increase it, it's only by small, because everything has gone up. So I promise you that I, we have heard you, but if we are going to increase it, I will not increase it by more than 10%. So that it is something you can afford. <laughs> It's okay, Omo the Commissioner for Physical Planning, Housing, Urban and Regional Development, and the host for this event, constitute Chukma on top the Edo Regional Development Plan and the Benin City Master Plan to help the people understand how the matter go proper, proper. You know, so this is what they talk, eh? some of them sound like saying a big, big English, but not be big English at all. Now, what did they happen now? From time when I know, say, Benin City, na plan city, I've been alive. It, that we already plan them. But as it be like this today, we like them. We like them. We need them to change. 
So within government can't decide, say we don't do many master plan, but we never do them, we don't write them down, but we don't do them, the work as we supposed to do them. And you know, say everything they design, as far as the town concerned, our land, now it concerned. Abi? And everybody will consign land, they inside here. So we need to make sure, say, what do we plan, now we they do. So we'll go get the town the way, way we like them. Abi not be so. And not be just the town that the whole Edo State. So now be the two master plan. One now, uh, Edo State Regional Development Plan, we go cover both rural and urban area. And then the Bini City Master Plan. As soon as I see earlier, the show now say, even the urban area for Bini, for Edo State, not only 4% of the whole 100%. That means, say, most of the area for Bini, they for rural area, Bini a lie. So it's important, say, as we do Bini, we go to do every other area. So that people go to their place and they go feel do what they want to do for their place. And everything go day there as we like them. Because what did they happen now? We say many things they see. We are supposed to put hospital low. We are supposed to put school. We are supposed to put roads. Sometimes when we reach there, they don't already sell the place. Or in order like that again. When I see us flood there everywhere right now, we don't see them. All over Nigeria. And we know now God just save us so. So now this small part of us they feel them. But if we continue the way where would they go? We don't want all those things to be our portion. We want to make we, our place continue to provide what we need. So this whole thing we'll call now today, now to tell you and say, look, this is not what the government they do. And all of us get to put hand together, make it work. And all of us get, no, need to know what it be our own, our own part to play for this master plan. Because what we do and finish, now we now go help implement them. I'll be alive. Now we go help implement and government no fee, then if you use one hand cash lice for head. Now two hand, three hand go join together. I may not be so. So that is why we call all of you now together. And this plan as we do I'm one thing good about and be say we don't want to do like the old plan. We will go plan, put them for table, come out. As we do them, we they work inside the plan. So that you go see say this is when government talk. Now true. Then they call our gov governor we can see for nothing. As we they talk the plan, we they do them. Now make you hear the man to say, I won't come talk about uh, uh, my boundary and country home. Because as we come they do the work, we and say, we need to start to change things now. If we don't start to they regenerate the Bini city and the other cities, slum, slum, now go come grow. And when the slum grow, to, to live inside and enjoy and go really hard. So now make we come, okay, we go do some things. Make you make people for see, say this will not be just talk, talk. Now talk and do. As we they talk, we they do. So that everybody go know which time when the development go reach in area. What every two way supposed to do? How you supposed to manage in land? How you supposed to make sure say master plan therefore in your own area? Because now small, small master plan join together to be the big Edo State Regional Development Plan. While we are doing this uh, master plan to show you what other things that are coming up. So it's not just like Mr. Governor says, it's not just a document on the shelf. A lot of questions, or back in the we were here, but I think maybe maybe governor answered and they were happy and they got up and left. But we wanted everybody to understand what has actually happened. In the last one month, we are taking possession of the land that government had acquired in 2017 for a new town. And there has been a lot of questions. You know, uh day, but Ebo Dene. It's happened, it has happened, and it's not ending here. It is important we say that, that we'll still go and take possession of other places. And the reason is not far-fetched. A lot of things we want to do, even for, to make our city and to make other cities habitable, we cannot do because the land is no longer there. They've turned it to something else. They've done things that they shouldn't do. There are laws, but people want to do things without outside of the law. We cannot continue to let that happen. This land that has been acquired is 1,229 hectares. But this 1,229 hectares cuts across four sessions. And in this four session, if you can look at it, you can see B is blue. Is that correct? And D is blue. And part of C also has this blue thing. It means that those areas will not, we will not build anything there. We will leave the people that are already there to continue to, uh, to occupy. But we will also tell them how they will live. So that the old and the new, when you come, you will not notice much difference. One will not look like an old place and the other place looks like a new area. They will all be symbiotic. 
If you look at as well, another reason why we ask them not to build at the moment, there are two major roads linking the, the four areas. Can you see that? Those roads are going to pass houses as they stand today. There are some houses already on that road. So we do not want you to continue to build in case your house falls on that road. So that those people that are on that road will be moved and given offer in the new area, in the plots. We'll pay them compensation so that the roads can come. So these are the reasons why we say to them, stop development in this area for now. Let us tell you exactly what is coming, how it affects you, and what you need to do. Deputy Governor of Edo State, Right Honorable Commit Philip Shaibu, coined everybody went there for the hall, made them carry this message to their various communities, and this government ready Gidigba to restore law and order for inside Edo State. Your contribution were very rich and very instructive. And uh, I think the next thing is for us to take this message home. Obviously, when you are not informed, different information will come to distract you. Today, you have listened to Mr. Governor, you have listened to the Commissioner and the team. You know where we are going now. I think the onus is for us to now take this message home. And for us, the traditional rulers, you can see you are the eye, you are the government in your various domain. Your authority for some time now have been challenged. They don't respect you. You are even afraid in your domain. Whereas you actually, you are Godwin Obaseki in your kingdom. But you have not been acting like Godwin Obaseki. Now, the Godwin Obaseki himself, the governor, are giving you back your authority. And in giving you back authority, he needed to clean all these characters out of your way for you to now have that authority back. It's your own duty now not to lose it. Now, the dirty job has been done, cleaning these guys out. And you've heard from the governor today, even if they are abroad, the world is global now. It's just to reach there, they will bring them back. In this country before, somebody, we escaped to come back to Nigeria. <laughs> so I want to just assure you, when we were campaigning from the first term, there's one thing Mr. Governor was always constant when he makes his statement. He said, we are going to make sure there is law and order. The law is coming to rectify and to make the master plan a legal document in Edo. The order is that you now have the authority to act as a Nikes, act as the traditional ruler that you are. Not somebody coming to grab land. You are to now come and register your community land. Your community land now will now be gazetted in the system worldwide. When they log in, your community is in the map of a door and is in the master plan of a door. Your community now land is becoming a legal tender and nobody can do you anyhow. That is where we are going. That is the civilization that we are talking about. Ali Hijazi, when the representative of Siraj Nigeria Limited, can show the phase one of the master plan when the background and analysis. So first, I'm going to give you an idea on where we are right now. So we are at the end of phase one. In phase zero, we submitted the inception report. The phase one is actually the background studies on the current situations of all the sectors of the state. The next phase will be setting the objectives for Edo State Sustainable Development and the phase after will be the actual plan. Next to that will be the monitoring phase where we make sure that the plan is actually implemented. There is some quick win, fast interventions that are going to happen. One of them is the Benin Medical City. This is a 3D view of the design of the city. The project is located at the southern fringe of Benin City on Benin Sapli Road. The total area of the place is 460,000 square meters. The specialized hospital will include 200 rooms, outpatient departments, MRI, CT scans, and geography and radiography, ultrasound, and mammography. This is the design of the medical city you have on the right side the hospitalization of the area 150,000 square meters in the middle you have the medical clinics to the left you have the educational uh, facility 
uh, that is connected to the nursing school that already exists, exists there. And in the middle, you can see this green line. It's going to be a linear park connecting the hospitaliz hospitalization area with the educational area. This is a realistic top view of the project after implementation. So this is the Benin New Town project, which is one of the biggest quick wins uh, that fall under the master plan. The last project is the GRA Benin of Benin Uplifting. This project aims to redesign and uh, rework the streets within the GRA. Next. So these are the roads that are within this project. We have Ikpokpan Road, we have Reservation, Gulf Road, all the roads that are within the GRA. I'm just going to show you an example. Next slide, please. So this is, for example, the Reservation Road. This is before and this is after it being designed. This is going to be a pilot project to show how the streets of the city will be in the future. Professor Momo Rilwani, when they part of the technical team, constitute more to top the matter. Yes, the governor just explained to us the essence of the uh, those say regional development plan and the Benin City master plan. It's part of the mega agenda to ensure that we have a greater Edo state. And uh, of course, he got very capable team to do this work. And he also appointed a technical advisory team that will interface between the consultant, Siraj, and the Edo state government to maintain communication with key stakeholders, as well as provide technical review of deliverables from the perspective of each member's area of expertise. And lastly, the team is also to provide technical guidance to the MDAs assigned and handhold staff in developing their master plan and other connected issues. Two session reports, both for the industrial development plan and for the Benin City master plan. But what we have received so far are the ones shown on, the, on your right hand side. We have received 50 phase one session reports and of course zero phase two session reports, both for the industrial regional development plan and the Benin City master plan. Source and use primary data for about 90% of its information for more accurate, reliable, and source specific results which are very fundamental for any master plan. These stories today come to you from the studios of TMC TV and Radio. My name now Omwa Luke at Jakaye. Ambos Agbenevare, and in charge of camera for this production, Loretta Ojesele, and I'm the linear editor, and I'm no side de look by the produce this story. No forget to say your PVC and your power. No sell I'm giving a politician on the election day.